I would uh, like to call the uh, March 9th meeting of the Diversity, Racial Equity, and Inclusion uh, Committee uh, to order. Um, I believe that everyone, res oh, uh, uh, by the way, this just wanted to rem remind people that um, this particular meeting is being uh, recorded. Uh, these proceedings will be made available to the town to view at a later date. So again, wanted everyone to be uh, aware of uh, the fact that uh, these proceedings are recorded. Um, moving uh, down through the agenda, um, first I wanted to check in to see if everyone reviewed, uh, received and reviewed the uh, minutes from our last meeting. Yes. Everyone yes. had an opportunity to do that. Any questions, concerns about those meetings? I do have one small edit. Uh, you had Margaret Feeney is attending and is, um, is absent. So we're gonna, she was absent from that meeting. So I just took okay. her name out as in attendance. That's okay. Okay. All right. okay. All right. I'd well, like to make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Yeah. Sorry, who was the, who made the motion? I was looking at my minutes. Charlie. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, we're all set. Okay, great. Very good. The uh, minutes from the uh, February 23rd meeting have been approved. Next item uh, on our agenda is the uh, uh, trans Transgender Day of Visibility Planning. As you, um, as we all know, the Transgender Day of Visibility is March the 31st. And um, I know that uh, when we had uh, last met, uh, Rachel wanted to make sure that we had, um, you know, spent some time with the planning uh, for uh, that particular um, you know, event. So um, we wanted to make sure that we identify some time on our calendar uh, to do that. I know that at, at this point, um, we do have the, um, uh, the article that was uh, uh, you know, provided to us um, and uh, we reviewed that. I know there were some changes made to that. I thought that that was very helpful. Um, and I think that uh, you know, folks who don't know a lot about uh, this particular area give some, some helpful guidance around some of the things that would be appropriate and acceptable to do um, to, uh, uh, you know, to acknowledge and to uh, uh, celebrate uh, the event. So I thought that was helpful. I uh, didn't know what other ideas the group has, uh, if there are other um, activities or any other things that we want to uh, be looking at uh, as uh, possible, um, you know, you know, again, activities for us to do. Uh, so I wanted to open that up to the floor and have a conversation around that. Oh, Rachel, I think your hand's up. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to tell um, Latasha had the, an idea to do um, an interview with a contact she has. And I just wanted to, to let her know that I had gotten that. I think it's a great idea. Um, and I've actually been thinking about some questions and an approach for like what might be a nice way to do that. Um, I just have been a little uh, underwater this week, <laughs> so to say. So I haven't put um, time into writing that down. Um, nor do I wonder if I'm a good person to commit to doing that interview right now, um, just due to some personal stuff. But um, I'd be really, I can definitely jot down some of my ideas of what we could ask. And I was thinking to take kind of an uh, an approach of asking about allyship a little bit with some pointed questions, like what were some things that that you saw or that people did that were really helpful for you during your transition or um, uh, yes, those types of questions would be very helpful. And um, I'm open to doing like a Zoom interview with her because she is a distance away. Just to fill you guys in, last week I think I had asked a question about transgender women of color. And because I wasn't aware of the crisis that they were facing. And Rachel sent me this article and I read the article and I was just so moved by it. I was talking to someone and uh, they're like, I know someone who's transgender, I can introduce you. And so that's how I got the connection. So there are six degrees of separation. I just wanted to share that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and um, could you say more about, you know, how we set up the interview and you, uh, you said that 
We do it via Zoom with the idea be to, to uh, do the interview, tape it, and have it on our site to be regularly viewed. Um, well, that- I'm open to suggestions by the committee. Um, I'm actually not certain how long the interview would be, but I would definitely need some questions to help guide me through it. Mm-hmm. And if someone wants to co-interview with me, I'm open to that, too. Hi, Carly. Hi. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I just had a question. Is the interview focusing um, solely on transgender um, um, or is it going to focus on uh, families, gay families and, you know, children who attend schools in the community and how, you know, the community supports the kids and the families? What is the focus for the interview? Is it just for trans um, the woman that you wanted to interview? So the woman that I know doesn't have children. Okay. So it would just be about what her experience is and how Rachel just mentioned our allyship. Okay. Do we want to do something more yeah. than beyond that, though? I feel like we could if we know more people or have more resources that we could point to. Yeah. I guess I guess my my feeling about it is that. Um, you know, if we, you know, have the opportunity and we have an, an individual who's willing to talk to us, mm-hmm. uh, perhaps it makes sense to have a more focused conversation with that particular person so they can be speaking from a position of, um, uh, you know, I, I guess a more knowledgeable position. I mean, sure. If, by that I mean you you wouldn't want to have a person who perhaps doesn't have children in a, in a, in a school system or or you know, due to their own personal situation, doesn't experience the community in quite the same way as someone else might. So, you know, I think uh, for our our purposes, you know, having a more focused conversation that can help bring us some, I don't know, maybe, maybe some more detailed me. conversation, yeah, around some of those, um, just, you know, a couple of key issues I think might be you know, uh, very helpful. So yeah, so and I, I agree. I just wanted to know if there were going to be other interviews, if we were going to have other conversations. Right. It's, it's, it's just know, a, it's a one day videos? event. I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's just a one day event, so we're not going to have a lot of time to, you know, feature it per se. So um, we can line those kind of things up as we get closer to other events, you know, and we've got the whole LBGTQ month of June um, that we can focus those kind of things on and more education. Um, but for, for, for this being a one day event and we've got somebody, I mean, I would like to, I, I will pose some questions that are probably more like, okay, educate me. I mean, I don't know the right, I am still very confused about the use of pronouns and things like that. And I, you know, it's just, honestly, I just don't know. So I'd like to be able to just honestly have a conversation and say, what's, what makes you comfortable? What's, you know, how can you, uh, you make me comfortable talking to you and how can I make you comfortable talking to me? And I just want to be able to speak the same language and be respectful. And I want to learn how to be able to do that. Right. And I think a lot of people would, is that, would that be okay to just have very, Oh yeah, I'm totally supportive of it. I yeah, I it was just a broad broader yeah. question of if we're going to mm-hmm. cover other areas. So yes. no, that's fine. I think it's great. Hello, Lauren. Um, yeah, hi. Can you guys hear me? I still don't have my thing. Um, yeah. Just for the future, because I wasn't sure where this was going. I, I have a student, Peter, who is transgendered, um, and I knew Peter before he had transgendered and went through the whole process. Um, and so I know Peter is a Chumsford student. He's in college now he just got a, his first job um, I know he would certainly be willing he was very much an advocate for um, educating on the subject also Christy Whittlesey wrote a book on LGBTQ and it's been published and she is the fine arts coordinator so I wanted to make you aware of this I haven't read the book but she does have a whole website um, about it so it's sort of her passion so I think that's a good resource as well so I just want to say that you know there's a couple of resources that I know personally. Could you share their contact information with me and maybe I can get all three of them on the same call? Yeah, I mean, Peter's a dynamo, let me tell you. He's amazing. And he educated me a lot. Okay. So it's it's very useful. But yeah, Ryan? We'll do- um, yeah, I just had a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, number one, if we're gonna have uh, these conversations, 
I think if we want to do a video, it should be like five minutes plus or minus one minute. Um, that probably is is the amount of time we're going to get to have, um, you know, people pay attention for. Uh, if we want to do something longer form, though, I would probably suggest something like a podcast or just mm -hmm. a an audio conversation, because that's a lot easier to like download to your phone and play in the background while you're driving or walking or whatnot. And that's that's a much better format for a longer form kind of conversation. So I just wanted to give my recommendation for how we want to package this in, in a multimedia type of uh, way. So thank you. OK. We'll be taken under consideration and see how it goes. Anyone else? Um, just as far as the document itself and how you thought we should be presenting those links, um, because it's a one day event, the calendar is already featured as a one day event on the calendar. Um, I thought we could do a page, like a sub page to our page that just we could build upon like LGBTQ plus resources and then just have this, you know, as one of the items there saying March 31st is Transgender Day of Visibility, have all of the bullets that we had from that document that we created. Um, and then we can build upon that page as we do more as, as rather than, I mean, pushing out a news flash, we could just say, hey, today's March 31st, Transgender Day of um, Visibility, you know, here and point to, to that one particular page. And um, does that sound like it's a, a good way of doing it? And then if we do a video, I'll put the video on the page. That makes sense. I, I think that's a great idea because I think our town page is just starting to look like a really long list of links. And things are just going to get lost if we don't find a better way to categorize them. Well, did you notice that I moved all of the slideshow and all, everything off to a, the sub pages? Have you looked I at didn't. it? After, I did notice. That's so great. After, yeah. after Black History Month ended, the, the slideshow is gone, but we didn't want to lose all that content. So I had had a notable people of color tab over there. And it's got a little plus side. So if they open that up, then it breaks it out by the artists and authors, the educators and innovators, um, whatever the third, science and medicine and politics and activism. So all of those profiles are then there under those subcategories. So as we feature things, um, you know, we feature them on that main page, but then we move them off. It, we want to just keep building and building, but I like that. it can't stay that way because, yeah, you, people aren't going to scroll down. So Latasha's introduction to Black History Month is now archived to bring back out maybe next year or something. I mean, but it's our <laughs> So that yay. But you know, it it's not a really dynamic web page. You know, it's just for information. But I, you know, I can move things. I just don't want anything to go away. So if you have any other suggestions after you look at it, um, like I said, those left hand navigations, you still have to point people there because they're never going to find it if you don't point people there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, any other suggestions, let me know. Hi, everyone. This is Joe. I was a few minutes late, so sorry about that. Um, I, apologies if this has already been covered, but um, I actually went to school with somebody who works for the Human Rights Campaign, and they're a trans individual themselves and have been working with Fortune 100 companies to um, update their inclusivity policies and do some of the training and get people more comfortable with the concept of being trans. So there's really good link on the HRC website. Would that be helpful to include on our page as well? Um, OK, I can just email that to the, the chain because that's really good. It has different topics such as um, like LGBTQ youth, um, like what is transgender, some of like the health issues, just things that you probably wouldn't think about unless you're in the shoes. So I'll just send the link to the, the chain that we had before. And, might be worth adding. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I'll try. Thanks. I'll try again tomorrow. That's good. It sounds like we've got you know some uh, you know definitely a good start on uh, where we want to be. And um, I think uh, uh, you know with uh, you know Latasha's idea of uh, uh, getting someone uh, or accessing someone who we could you know talk with in an interview uh, would be uh, 
uh, really help, helpful, and I think it's going to work out uh, very well, you know, for for uh, us, you know, for the, for the, for this go round. Because uh, so that, that all, all all sounds good to me, and I guess it's just a matter of of um, uh, kind of reviewing the information, Latasha, that that you get, and then you kind of figuring out, you know, how how you want to go about um, doing the interview, and then getting it posted and and uh, and we're all set. Is, is there anything else that if others want to uh, discuss related to uh, uh, this particular issue? Is that uh, Sheree? Yeah, sorry, uh, I was on mute. Um, I do agree with what Brian said. I think it would be nice. A podcast is so nice. Someone had forwarded me one today, and just listening to it was so soothing. And I I really had my attention um, listening and what you know, what was being said. And, and so, especially if you're in your car, it's a nice drive time, listen to. So I would highly recommend that as a, um, at, you know, just repeating what he said. And I just wanted to uh, say, Tricia, that was an excellent document um, that was uh, put together on the trip. Cause I mean, there was so much I did not know. So I just wanted to commend whoever put that together and they did a great job. Well, the, I was pretty impressed that the mayor's office from Philadelphia actually called me back and said, yes, we had permission to use it. And then thankfully, Rachel edited it for me and she added an extra item and and kind of tweaked it. But yeah, no, I found we I just happened to find it. It had everything so concisely put together and um, I didn't want to just plagiarize it. But you know, no, I actually got a call back from the mayor's office and they said, yep, go right ahead. So we have the credit for the person that wrote it initially and um, that it said the original post was done by this person, Philadelphia. So, yeah. well done. <laughs> I'll tell you who said that. <laughs> Thanks. Susan, your hand is raised. Now, let me see if I can. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell if I was unmuted or not. So, both times you sent to Tricia in the email, I couldn't get any of the links to open. But when it appears on our page, it now will have active links because I wanted to read some of the other things and I just couldn't get them to open in the emails. That's really? Well, the first email I sent you, some of the links were broken. So right, and the second one, I couldn't it. open them either. I don't know what that did. But it right. might have been my computer. <laughs> it's always trying to set me up to use the apps it wants to use. I have a lot of trouble with it, trying to tell me how to how to open docs and ways that don't yeah, really I'm not work. sure I oh, oh you know why because I wonder if it's because now our IT department has this Vadar secure thing that if I don't if I open it in Microsoft Edge it it has to go through some secure thing first so I will double check it but Rachel did you have any problem opening the links no no, all right, they were I'll all double. working for me. There was just the first round. There was one that didn't. Yeah, that work. was some broken yeah. links that were even broken mm -hmm. on the Philadelphia site. So mm -hmm. I will um, double check. I did. I have a draft of it on the website right now, but I didn't want to publish it yet. Um, I'll just double check all those links. I don't know how to get them to you unless I try to send them as a PDF. Maybe if I convert it to a PDF first and then. Separate, attach the links. I'll try though. Well, but if you're going to put it on the web page, that's fine. Yeah. As they long as I know I can open them when they're there, because I really wanted to read some more of it and I just wasn't able to. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Thanks okay. for letting me know. Sure. I'll look into it. Great. Any other um, input on this particular item? Okay. Great. Sounds good. Well, that's, that's good that we're we uh, have a, have a place to go as it relates to that, and uh, um, good that we had an opportunity to review it. Um, continuing on the agenda, uh, I know that uh, our last meeting, um, I think Carly had asked, uh, kind of, uh, I, I think it was Carly, or it might have been someone else. My memory's so unreliable. At any rate, we wanted to do a, a kind of a check in to see where we were with regards to the uh, software support. I know there was some. Con, you know, conversation about um, uh, the uh, smart smart sheet. Smart sheet and I know yeah. people, you know, people have been kind of struggling with with that, and um, uh, just wanted an opportunity to kind of check in to see if we had any any activity, you know, as as it related to that, or if we were still working with that. 
My apologies. It's I did okay. not. I did not send the link to okay. Carly. I actually don't remember my login. I'm gonna, and every time I think of trying to figure it out, I I get sidetracked. So it's been in, on the back of my mind, but it keeps getting brushed off. So my apologies. I have not been able to log in myself, so I wasn't able to share the information with Carly. Um, but we'll. Uh, I'll have to make oh, that. You know what? I had a really busy last week, Tricia, so that's fine. And when you get okay. it to me, I'll reach out to them. <clears throat> and I'll sort it out. Okay. So as far as the goals go, it's, it might make it a little hard for us to update. I actually did no homework on where we're at with the goals for my group. I didn't get a chance to, so. Okay. That's yeah. okay. We'll get it sorted. Yeah. All right. That's it. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, uh, okay, with that being the case, then we will move on to uh, uh, working group updates and see if we have, if we do have any at all. And I, I, I think uh, the culture folks said they didn't have an opportunity to connect. Um, no, or... the culture team, we, um, we did have a meeting of, of a couple of weeks ago, but we agreed that we wouldn't uh, rejoin. We, we talked uh, mostly about the indigenous people and the efforts there. Right, Mm -hmm. And we decided that because there's so much going on that we would um, hold off having another meeting until April. So okay. I'll just I'll schedule a meeting for April. But uh, we've you've got the notes from the indigenous meeting discussion that right. we had. Right. OK, there yeah. there was a change. Um, I don't know if anybody had a chance to watch the select board meeting on Monday. But they did make a change. So if we're talking about in any of our pl future plans of doing a proclamation, or I think that um, Rafa had talked about some other type of a document that we are looking to have the select board sign, that they wanted to have an opportunity to have it be sent to them two meetings in advance so that they had plenty of time to be able to edit any document or, you know, so that it would go back and forth. So they actually created a new policy on Monday night about proclamations and such documents like that. So just to okay. keep in mind, we'll always have to plan far enough in advance that we can, you know, have that back and forth with editing before we actually have to you know, publish it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, just to let you know also, Carly, that I'm part of a, um, there's a, it's our employee business um, groups and they have different um, areas and I signed up for the indigenous Native American category so that um, whatever information that I'm able to attain from there, I will part to you if I feel it's worthwhile. So, you know, that oh, that's awesome. Be, mm -hmm. that's yeah, great. they have Thank really you. great information. So. I'm excited to be a part of the group. Wonderful. Anything else in that space? All Nothing right. for culture. Okay, moving right along to the education folks in the education working group. We haven't done anything since our last meeting. I know we had talked about probably meeting with Linda Hirsch quarterly, which would mean sometime in April. The schools are so up to their eyeballs now with this mm -hmm. forced reopening that I don't even know if April makes sense. So, I mean, I'll talk to Lauren and maybe Margaret and we'll see where we can go with that. But I think is Linda Margaret, might. Is Margaret here tonight? We um, haven't touched base with Margaret for a while, like even some of the emails you sent, Susan. Right. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. what, I'm, what I'm doing in school, which is interesting at the high school, there's I, I teach two film classes and there is a like a film competition sponsored by the Massachusetts Partnership for Youth. And the subject is we stand together and it's supposed to be on diversity and Black Lives Matter. So I have, you know, 35 students are going to make PSAs on that subject matter. Um, some of them will be good. Some of them will not be as good. But I thought when they were finished, perhaps we could run them on our website, you guys. So that's coming down the road for me. And as you know, the Civic Action Club is also hosting a select board debate, which is pretty exciting. Gaia 3 took it upon herself to 
planet with the kids in that group. But um, Susan's right, Linda's, they're, they're sort of all working on phasing back in. So all the meetings have been about that, but it's still in our minds, Susan, in my minds to really so get something going and maybe to sit down and do goals. I think we need specific goals now to plod them along. So but that's, that's happening from a small mm -hmm. end anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think Chris, they're going to know a lot more within the next couple of weeks what they have to do in terms of what the state is telling them. So maybe things will free up and we could meet with her, Lauren. So yeah. we will meet. Sure. Yes, I have a question. Um, how far in advance um, does the school department plan their curriculum? Is it a full year in advance? Is it is it six months in advance? Um, that's a good question. It's usually you make a proposal like, the digital film class, like I created it because kids said, would you teach a film class? I said, I know nothing about film. So I proposed it and then I had to put together a whole pacing guide and I had to sort of develop the curriculum. So probably a good like six, usually it's like a meeting in October to talk about the following year. So it is like at least six to eight months because I've told you that my friend in Wakefield, Margaret, who was an English teacher at the high school, has an elective on racism and I, I really want to get a hold of the whole course that she's developed and she said she would share it with us because I just think it's something that's not talked about. Now, Linda did say about 30 teachers are reading how to be an anti-racist, which is great. I just got a new book that my sister read in the Ch Lowell Library Book Club called How to Be Less Stupid About Race and so far <laughs> it's a riot and um, I really like it. It's a, uh, uh, oh, it's a, 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 a doctor, I, oh, what are, I, Dr. Fleming, and it's a really quick, easy, funny read, but I'm, I'm learning so much already and I've only just started reading it. So I'd like to make sure that, you know, these books are sort of read and even see what books can be read. Not so much about featuring, you know, authors of color, you know, author, you know, people of all different um, BIPOC in the books, but also to have the discussions, but to do that correctly, to have diversity training at the high school. That's what I worry, that it will just be another story kids read. Like I've read great books. I read Black Like Me and I read great books when I was in the eighth grade and ninth grade, you know, um, whatever was going on then. So it was talked about. But my concern is, can we get something like, I don't know if that's where you were going, Tricia. I, well, I mean, the book list, I, I, I think the way I understood it, and I would really like, I don't know if, um, part of being part of the education committee, if you guys are regularly touching base with the with the CARES group at the high school, but there I thought we're pushing the, the reading list. Is that is the do you know? Yeah, they are. And I did talk to Jenna Ward, who was getting her yeah. Girl Scout gold star about it. And Lisa Parada, who's an English teacher friend of mine, gave them a list of she went to each teacher and found out what they were teaching mm -hmm. because there's more being taught than necessarily they even know because there's some little choice that some teachers have. That's what I want to know. I want to yeah, know if any of these issues are being brought up as far as integrating them into the curriculum as a regular thing. And that's that's what I, I was just curious if, if when you first met with. So did you first meet with Linda Hirsch a while back? You met we, with her once, right? January. In January. Okay. With her in January. Did she indicate in addition to, um, you know, um, the support support and education of the teachers did she indicate that they were working on anything for curriculum for students well that course that lauren that you just mentioned linda knew about that and yeah. was interested in seeing if there was a way to add that course in right. and there were some other possibilities she thought about and she talked about how the brand new elementary um reading right. program right. had a really strong component of um, diverse authors and then how to teach to those books and what and a little bit of a experience the, someone I know who's doing a fabulous idea job is it is the librarian at Byam yeah and books she reads aloud and the way she talks about them oh, Betsy something. is that Betsy Yes. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and I know, I nothing put that, that link up, and then she's like, "No, you have to take that down because I don't have permission." So. Oh, she, I had uh, asked yeah. her, but then I guess <laughs> like, she okay. found out she couldn't. That's too bad. Yeah, At first, she thought she could, but yeah. I mean, she does a great job with that in, in a way that they weren't doing just four years ago when I yeah. when I worked for the school. So, um, yes, but so Linda talked a little bit that one course, Lauren, in particular. So I think we do need to kind of get back in touch and yeah. nudge that a little. Yeah, just kind of get, you know, kind of get a list and, and some 
you know, some time frames and just kind of keep them. I don't yeah. know. I just, I just would I like can to probably get hold of the list because Jenna Ward said she was given the list by Abby Dick, the English coordinator. And I know Stephanie, I mean, I know Christy's been great because I told you our professional development for the fine arts has been going out with these links. And I think I sent them to Phil and they're so interesting to get the art teachers to teach, you know, diverse, diverse artists, et cetera. Yeah, so that's it's great. there, but it seems like it's, you know, probably this would have been a huge initiative had it not been for the pandemic and the fate, you know, so much yeah. going on, but I think you it's know, anything they're doing. If you guys could just kind of report back and just let us know yeah. what, what it is they are doing. I mean, especially the CARES group. I mean, I know they're they're right there. They're they're it's, advocating for this every day, are they? Not? It's just a it's just a book list, though. There's two book that's lists. There's there's the one Jenna Ward did, and right. then there's the one that their committee did. But all they're doing is putting together a book list. And I have spoken to them about how it needs to be embedded in the curriculum and there needs to be professional development. But they don't have anyone who seems to be working on that now. Every once in a while, I put a little suggestion into their our chat group. Oh, OK. Right now good. they're working on the a get out the vote effort. OK, well, that's, that's great. That's, right well, that's good information to know that you're in their yep. little chat group and you're paying yes. attention to what's going on because you know we don't know until they put it on their page we don't know what they're doing and and i'm curious you know i'm just curious to right. see the young people getting involved in, in all of this is is really key so thank you for all right. that you guys do to make and, that happen. and linda is looking for um another person to get on the professional development committee which is the development that would she said they only meet three or four times a year but would be getting speakers you see that's what i think we need to do i mean i think we need to sit down and make goals and help her because she's a very busy person but sometimes it's like here's a great speaker let's get her in Here, here's a course here's a whole course you could actually add as an elective so i think those are the kind of tangible things that i would like to see and as you said it wasn't even Jenna's list. It was Lisa Parada, an English teacher's list, who went around and did it back in June yeah. when all of this happened and gave it to Jenna. Um, so yeah, we can we can get on that and, and okay. talk to her. So, yeah. And Richard's sure. baby has another list though that's a different yes, list Richard than does, Jenna's yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll 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 get on that. Thank you. I got to figure out how to turn put put my hand down now. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, Thanks. I'm just going to say, okay, Trisha, what do you need? Ah, enough. I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Anything else on the uh, education front? So we'll move on to uh, uh, communications. So uh, Latasha and I were talking as part of the, uh, you know, co-chairs of the commu communication working group. And, you know, we were busy, as you know, uh, everybody did such a fabulous job for uh, February Black, Hi Black History Month that, you know, we weren't thinking ahead to think about what month is this? This is Women's History Month. And I know what, we missed it. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, my God. So she and I were talking about it. And so we were thinking we bring it to the group tonight. Like, what, we can't, we still have time. And we may not be as elaborate as we were with the uh, February month, but we have to do something, doggone it. I'm just, <laughs> it's Women's a History quick, Month. A quick Facebook post yesterday just saying, <laughs> the diversity and racial equity and inclusion committee would like you to celebrate, you know, what is it, uh, International Women's Day? Yes, or Women's something. Day. I was like, yes. I had no pictures, I had nothing, nothing, but I was like, at least we put something out for that. Yeah, so I we were thinking that, you know, this would be a good opportunity to just think about something in the next days ahead of us, you know, what can we do to maybe, you know, uh, quickly put some, oh, oh, look at that, Mrs. Cochran. Amazing there. women, <laughs> women that inspired you, I just caught it. <laughs> so you're going to do a report coming up and put it on, online for no, us? No, it's, it's, it's for children, but it's kind of cool, and it's got women... It, I bought it because I wanted to buy my niece and future nieces and whatever. I have nieces and nephews, you know, little kids. So I bought a bunch of books on diversity recently. And yeah, I don't know, I'm saying maybe this stuff we could use. Yeah, if you could uh, maybe peruse through it as you, you know, and, and see if anything sticks out. But I don't know what we can do. We don't meet until, you know, every other Tuesday now. But I think it's worthwhile to try to, we don't want to throw something together either. And uh, maybe we could use something that's already out there, which there's lots out there. And so I don't know. I don't want to. I would 
hate to let this month go by without some type of recognition. Um, so th that was an opportunity we missed. And, and it makes me think that as, as we're planning these different events, we have to think ahead too. Somebody has to be thinking ahead in the next month. So we're not coming upon this a little too late as we are right now, but I think it's still an opportunity to do something. And I don't, maybe perhaps maybe our committee can, our working group can come together sometime um, this week or so. I don't know, this weekend, I don't know, and try to think of some thoughts and maybe the other folks on the line can also maybe uh, put their thinking caps on and put, throw some ideas out. But I just would hate to have this uh, opportunity and this, uh, rec, you know, this month go by without doing something. And maybe it won't be like the next couple, even if it's at the end of the month, something I think we should do. So. <clears throat> and Latasha, did you want to add anything to that? As one of the co-chairs? Any thoughts? Um, I am available if we want to meet one day this week, just not Thursday night. Um, and Saturday morning, but I think we might want to see if there's a resource that's already done something and perhaps see if we can use it. Kind of like with the Philadelphia Transgender Day information. So, cause we really don't have a lot of time to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna suggest that, that you know, that same thing. Cause um, uh, again, I was, I too was, was aware that you know, here we are in Women's History Month and hadn't, uh, you know, had anything planned. At the same time, um, you know, you, you don't want to try, as somebody has already mentioned, you don't want to try to rush something and put something together that, that's not, you know, representative of, of our best work. And I think that if there are things that are already out there that we can piggyback on, um, and even if it's something as simple as, you know, uh, information that we can post, or you know, um, links that we can you know send folks to um, that you know we, we make that available and at at least it's it's not um, you know you know the the you know Women's History Month is not uh, doesn't appear to be totally forgotten by our group but I think that's that's really what we need to do because time time is pretty tight as yeah, as yeah. You, you know as everybody knows so so I think that uh, uh, if we can one thing that we could do recommend uh, we could start off. Uh, with the poem by Maya Angelou with uh, Phenomenal Woman. Mm. Um, she has some, that's a great one uh, to maybe post uh, and maybe it's something a week or something, but we'll get together our, our working group and have some thoughts around that and see what happens. But that's something right there that's already available and out there. And um, Lauren, if you come up with something from that book, please yeah. pass it on to us. That'll be great. Yeah, I, if you, yeah, let me know when the meeting is. I'll be happy to help with that one because I we can take just you know we can go through the people that are in that and just a little post and you know sort of tweak the words a little bit so it's not plagiarism, but um, mm -hmm. it might be just a little helpful thing. So sure, of course. Sounds great. Okay, thank you so much. That's mm -hmm. what we have right now. Okay, great. Good. Sounds good. Anything else? All right. Next is the uh, uh, diversity training uh, uh, working group. And we actually had a, an opportunity to get together last week. And uh, that's uh, um, uh, Susan, Carly, Rachel, and, and myself. And uh, we did have an opportunity to go through you know, uh, a number of things. And hey folks, please jump in if I you know, uh, miss something. The key, the key pieces for me that, that I think we covered is you know, when, when it comes to training, we wanted to focus um our activities at least at the beginning on coming up with some training that we could um offer to uh the uh, select board because i think we all agree that uh, um they need some assistance in trying to you know kind of un understand a lot of the issues you know related to um you know some of the work that we're doing um and in in in, in particular you know kind of uh under understanding things like you know white privilege and what you know, anti-racism what what does all what does all that mean and and how you know how would we expect them to approach it or, or kind of understand it and you know we 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 kind of settled upon at least at least for the time being an approach that's that we think will be a two-pronged approach 
One piece is, you know, uh, clearly having some sort of overview that we would provide to or, or make available uh, to the board. Uh, ideally, it could be, you know, facilitated um, or presented maybe by a consultant or, you know, or it would be some sort of a directed activity just to give them an overview on that. The other piece would be um, uh, followed by some sort of a, uh, you know, self-directed, you know, training that they could do, you know, on, you know, on their on their own time individually. Uh, and the uh, information we were looking at uh, is uh, the uh, info that uh, Rachel had provided, um, you know, uh, to us on a, um, uh, you know, from uh, from a group that. And for some reason, I have this mental block on, on remembering um, uh, the uh, the name of the uh, of the training organization. It's, uh, point Mead Learning. Point, the point Mead. I don't. For some reason, I have Point Mead comes up in my mind. So I'm going. No, it's not me. Point Mead Learning. But it, it's actually a you know a, a really good um, uh, kind of uh, online based uh, uh, training approach um, and. Uh, I, I think you know Rachel had mentioned it before. In uh, I think that you know they could really get a lot out of it. And I think we all kind of agree that that might be you know a a, a good one uh, for for us to offer uh, uh, to them. And uh, it, it's it's also not terribly expensive. I think it, we we said it was like eighty bucks for uh, each of you know uh, per, it would end up being eighty bucks per person. So. Um, that would be something that uh, you know we we could kind of talk about. Is that something we want to uh, gift them, so to speak, to encourage them to do the work, or is that something that they could pay for? But at least you know providing them with some real tested training that we believe is valuable that we can present to them that they can take. You know, it's not going to eat up. You know. Uh, scads and scads of time, but at least it's something that's going to be relatively easily, you know, accessible to them and get them started. So, so those were, you know, some of the things that uh, we had kind of uh, uh, focused on. Um, did I? Were there any any uh, of the major pieces, folks, that that I may have missed? Um, I want to just clarify one bit for it. A great overview. Um, part of the the point made is really about like. Uh, more anti-racism focused mm -hmm. and we are looking at the the intro and the first like maybe facilitated be like diversity in general mm -hmm. and yeah. really touching on a lot more of the different groups and and where to handle and what the overall issues are so we were kind of trying to like one like big blanket and then one deep dive into to uh, you know a subject and, and digging in right to privilege and things like that and systemic racism and I think a lot of the things learned there can then be extrapolated out to how does policy affect different groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that approach will work really well um, with the two prongs. So I just wanted to right. add on to that. Yep. Carly, anything that that the. Uh... No, I think you, that was perfect overview. Perfect. I mean, um, you know, at this point, I think that that one document that we have to come up with that gives them a, a general sense of what we're aiming for um is important to get in front of them mm -hmm. in, for, in front of the select board yeah. trish you had your hand up yeah i was just wondering if you looked at prices and any of these things yet um uh, the uh the kind of the the self-directed training of uh, that one i think we mentioned that would be uh, eighty dollars per person and i think you have access to the training for i believe it was 60 days if i'm not mistaken so it's it's plenty of time to go through the I think it's it's five or six uh, modules that they would go um, go through, uh, but they you know they can do that again on their own time, um, and uh, you know you know at at eighty bucks uh, you know a pop for the well, what do we got four people on the on the board at this, at this point you know we didn't feel as though initially that was that was uh, you know a prohibitive. Um, you know, you know, amount. With regards to the overview piece, we're still trying to source, um, you know, the right, uh, uh, you know, folks or or organization or consultant to do that work, you know, uh, for us. Um, and so I don't know how much 
anything like that might might cost. We've not zeroed in on any on on anyone. I think we all said that we would kind of go off on our own, use our own resources, you know, yep. and, and see if we could get some list of recommended, you know, consultants. You know, we're again not not looking at you know spending thousands and thousands of dollars, obviously. Um, and if we could get this done, I guess you know the figure that I'm kind of batting around in my head is that if we can get you know the whole thing done for under a thousand bucks, I think that would be great. You know, I, I would I would see that as, as you know as a as a positive. Uh, but uh, uh, that you know that's kind of what we're what we're looking at. And again, we 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 still need to get more detail so we come back to the group and say, hey, this is this is what we're uh, this is what we're looking for, looking at, and this is what we'd be offering to uh, or, or presenting to the board. Okay, and one more question, if I might, um, were you looking at um, possibly using the funds that were donated to us for this to offer it to them? Or if, yeah, if if that if that were possible, I mean, we didn't go into that level of detail. Okay. Because I wasn't sure. If, I mean, we didn't want to, you know, just immediately um, uh, mm -hmm. identify the funds and, and and direct them there without, you know, talking to the group. Uh, yeah. uh, and That's again, I don't know if if the board has its own uh, funding for this. They have a small thing. budget. They have a small so, budget, but not much. But it's just I just want to make sure that we have a plan for these funds because they were given to us for a diversity project. We right. need to pick a project and expend those funds before okay, before yeah. really the end of the fiscal year. I would think we should do that. So okay, well, we, always yeah, we can get in the back of your mind. Right. Okay. No. Well. No. That's great. I I think if we can depend on you know using our funds for that, then. You know that's great. I think that's what we should do. It's just one idea, but you know, again, just picking a project and and sorry and mm -hmm. and, and going forward. Just wanted to toss it out there. Thank you. I wanted to ask the committee: Are we going to also attend the same training that we are promoting to the select board? I think it would be wise if we did, mm -hmm. and especially if we have those funds, maybe we can get a group discounted rate for you know, having a larger attendance. Right. Well, that's one of the other things that came up as um, uh, during our meeting, and that was what our group may want to do uh, as it relates to our own training. And, um, you know, if, if that's something that people thought was, was uh, uh, worthwhile, and if so, what should it look like? What should the focus be? We didn't get into any of the details of that conversation. But certainly, if there's an appetite for uh, our group, you know, going through, you know, some training of its own, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's that's great. I mean, I I, I think we could all uh, certainly benefit from that. Um, just I think you know, it will help with just the sharing of ideas in the same language and thoughts. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. we haven't we haven't done anything in that space yet. Ra Rachel, you got your hand up. Um, we actually had an action item, or I have a note on this in mind, which is that we wanted to come back to the committee and talk about what everyone individually um, kind of wanted to get out of training or areas that mm -hmm. they felt that they had blind spots. So um, yep. I don't know if that's something that people want to like think on and then respond back in, in email form or have ready for another meeting. But it would be nice if we could kind of all think on that and then bring that together and say, OK, we have kind of a quorum that, that, that wants right. to do this type of thing. No, no, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you took those notes because I remember the conversation, but uh, we didn't. Um, um, I, I, I didn't have it in my notes. But no, that's exactly what we talked about. And I think that makes perfect sense. I, you know, I, I think you know we've we've all you know since forming the group. I think we've all been you know generally in the same space, and we haven't really you know done a lot with checking in with each person individually to see you know uh, is everybody comfortable with with X, their understanding of X or Y or Z or the language used and all of that. So we hadn't really done any of that. I think that makes sense for people to think about it, get back to see where folks are. Because because people may be in very different places. You know, what some per person feels, hey, I really need that. I could really benefit from this kind of conversation. Someone else may say, been there, done that, got the T-shirt, you lit the lapel pin, not really interested in doing that. You know, so I, I think, you know, to make it worthwhile, if we, especially if we're going to be spending money on it, you know, we ought to think through what it is we want to do and then kind of figure out, um, you know, come back to the group, you know, share what our focus is and then kind of go about it you know, in a more 
you know, um, thoughtful way to figure out what we want to do training wise. And Trish, see your hand up. I do. I was actually going to ask Joe if he would maybe put together another survey for us. <laughs> I, mean, I can do I that, but I would need like a a rough outline of what you want included. Yeah. I mean, just if like the different categories that you guys are looking at for education and, you know, whatever you were thinking of asking us what our weak spots are, you know, but that survey was just really helpful, a great way to collaborate and kind of see what we want to focus on, but just an idea. Thanks. Yeah, and, and it may be too, I, I know that, you know, um, you know, Joe had, you know, had mentioned that, you know, things are, are kind of top security for him, you know, at it, it, it work. <laughs> yeah as well it, it might be something just as as easy as us individually you know thinking about the three or four things that we that we would like you know uh most training on and just jotting them down in an email and shooting them off to, off, off to you know shoot, shoot them off to me you know and then we share with the team and and kind of figure out you know that that might be the easiest the easiest way for us to to you know to get at it kind of quickly you know so i don't know i don't know if any if, if everybody else feels Good about that approach or or if if something else you know if you could just put in writing then what what we're looking at for options you know see that's the thing i don't want to just say oh i'm i don't know what i'm weak at i really don't I, there's so much i have to learn i don't know what i'm weak at yet so i i, I don't want it to be so broad that it's not going to cover what you're looking at or i i don't know i just mm, okay. i guess i like a yeah, framework the, the, that, that was going to be that was going to be my point because if blind we too. each knew what our blind spots are they wouldn't be blind spots That's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to jump in along the same line i remember our very first meeting we all introduced ourselves and what our backgrounds were and kind of why we joined this committee well now six months in i think we need to somehow have some kind of conversation that where we talk about well now what do we what have we learned and what do we still want to learn or what do we realize we need to learn and you're right brian it's if we knew what our blind spots were they wouldn't be blind spots but i have some i know i know there are things i'm going to throw one out how do you really be an ally without you know being artificial about it there's things like that i really want to know a lot more about i have a genuine interest in knowing that but i don't want to be patronizing or, or artificial and I think I could use some help with that so just throwing that out as a type of idea as opposed to a big umbrella thing like education mm. so just throwing that out there all right well I'll um why don't I take a stab at um trying to kind of come up with some um general you know training areas or training possibilities um I'll shoot it out to to uh, the working group, you know, as as a place to start, and then you guys can kind of add to it or say, Phil, no, that's off base or whatever, you know, until we come up with something and then share, um, you know, once we have something we think makes sense, share, you know, um, share that with the entire um, committee uh, as a way of starting to, you know, collect people's ideas about, you know, where they think they want to be. Sounds Does that good. Make sense? Yep. Phil, there was one other thing that we talked about, which was the virtual um, view parties working oh, with yes. the library okay. to mm -hmm. um, select a, a catalog of films that are relevant, that we can host some sort of, you know, um, virtual viewing party. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've not uh, connected with uh, uh, Maria Palacio yet, but uh, I intend to get that done this week. So at least I can get some uh, input from them if, if that would be something that they'd be um, willing on uh, to work with us on. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll uh, ho hopefully uh, uh, when we meet, when the working group comes together again, I'll have some um, some concrete information on that space in that okay. space. Okay, great. Anything else I missed, Susan? Did did you have your hand out? What, um, was there talk of uh, having somebody else join a committee? I don't know if I ever saw a response to that. That was for me. And yeah, um, yeah Phil responded right away. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know that we're looking to add anyone additionally, according to Phil, you can answer this. You know, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, 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 at this point in time, uh, well, just to step back, uh, the board is responsible for, um, you know, addressing any, any, uh, uh, 
uh, vacancies on, the, on any of the committees. And at this point in time, there's no plan uh, that I'm aware of from the board to um, you, know, uh, you know, fill any you know, uh, the vacancy that we could currently have on, on our committee. Uh, and the way I've left it with, uh, with them is that you know, when that changes, you know, they'll let me know and then we can you know, ha have the conversation. You know, in the meantime, we continue to move forward doing our work. And that's, you know, and I, I certainly believe we've got, um, you know, uh, you know, co you know, enough committed people to get the work done. We've continued to do that. We haven't missed a beat. I don't uh, anticipate that we will. So I'm going, I'm moving forward um, uh, in, in that way until or unless, you know, there's a reason to do something different. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else on the uh, diversity training space? All right. And let's see. Uh, Lauren, Lauren still has her hand up. I'm not sure if she has a question or not. But. No, that was a mistake. Sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the uh, next thing on, on the list was was uh, uh, revisiting the goals. I'm looking at at the time frame. I, you know, my, my feeling is that when we have the goals conversation, I, I really think we need to have a, a more of an in-depth conversation as it relates to that. Meaning, we all need to go back and look at what we initially said, you know, a number of months ago. These are going to be the goals that we commit to. A lot's happened since since um, we put all that together, and we might not be in the same space as we were before. So, I, you know, my recommendation is that we make that. Um, that conversation a significant part of, let's say, um, you know, our next meeting, for example, you know, so that we come to the meeting, you know, uh, with, you know, uh, you know, planning on talking about where are the goals, what are we doing, and kind of zeroing in on what are we going to do specifically, what are we looking to deliver, I mean, because we've all, we've started a lot of the work, we've had conversations, um, we've, you know, gotten some things done, and I think we have a better idea of what might be possible, what things may, might have been pie in the sky, what things might be more long term. But we, I think we need to zero in and get more specific and more, um, you know, kind of focused on what it is we want to do. So my recommendation, unless, you know, people, you know, have a, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, a strong feeling to the contrary, my recommendation is that we make that a uh, um, uh an agenda item for our next meeting and come prepared to have a detailed conversation, you know, on 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 where we are goals wise. Does that make sense to folks? Okay. All right, great. I see head, heads nodding. So I think that I think that's it. Um, and then I know that we also want to talk about uh, our meeting schedule. Uh, as uh, Trisha had had mentioned, you know, because we're now on a, on a different uh, you know, a, a different frequency in terms of the meetings, uh, looking at, you know, the specific dates, uh, we, you know, so that we know as we're inviting people in, um, what dates are available, what we need to ha have done by what particular time. So I think that's going to be an important piece for us to, uh, 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 to look at as well. Um, Latasha, Excuse me, Phil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have um, my hand raised. About the goals, Mm -hmm. I know we're waiting for the smart sheet. So is there a way for us to see what we started off with? Is that still in Teams? Trisha? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. All, All right. those goals are still in Teams. And I and, and Carly, I just figured out my login, so I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. So I was playing around. The reason why I asked talking. that question is just to ensure that we all get to look at them before the next meeting. Yeah, exactly. but some people don't okay. have access to Teams, but I right. can resend them to people. I mean, okay. I yeah. that's it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm going to give so Carly the. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be great too. If you could, if yeah. you could just resend them that, I think okay. that might that that might take care of it all. Okay. And, then, and then everybody has them, they go through them. Okay, all right, that's great. That's great. Um, any any other, you know, items for um our uh, our next meeting yeah we definitely want to decide which meeting when we're meeting next because we had actually right. write down the date so i know going backwards i mean we're meeting on april 13th because that's the day that we've invited state representative vanna howard and the right. reason why we invited her is because she just was appointed to 
the state's diversity. diversity. Correct. So, yep. um, so we, we want to make sure our goals align with theirs and, and, you know, just obviously she'll have a lot to share with us. Um, so if we're going to meet on April 13th, um, just get back to my calendar here and April 6th is election day. We don't want to meet that day. So, um, that leaves that we can either meet two weeks in a row on the 16th and the 23rd, or, or actually we could just meet on the 23rd and then skip a week. Um, it's up to, or we just skip a couple of weeks and just meet on the 30th. It's whatever you guys, um, because right now, if we were going to do it every other week, it'd be the 9th, the 23rd, but then the next one would fall on the 6th, which we don't, we will not be meeting. So what do you guys think? So I'm just going to put it out there. Can we just then miss two weeks in a row, meet the 23rd and not meet again until the 13th? Mm. Depends on, I mean, it, well, Phil has to get ready too for the, in, in April sometime the board, I don't know if the board is pinned down there um, calendar yet, but sometime in right. April, we have to do our next quarterly meeting. He's going to need time to prepare for that. We're going to need to help him with that. So, um, it's, I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking here. So 20, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would, I would, I would counter. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I would, I would counter propose the 23rd and the 30th. Yeah. I think that makes more yeah. sense because what we're talking about with trying to get something together for, you know, Women's History Month as well as moving forward with our goals, and it's going to be right before Phil's, you know, April. I mean, I just would like you to have lots of time to talk, uh, think about what you're going to say to the select board for their next update. So I, I think two weeks in a row would be a good yeah, idea. The, yeah, I, I don't have, a, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. All right. Um, if you could put that in the minutes, Susan, that'd be great because it's going to be, I got to make sure I remember to do the team's meetings and all that stuff. Right. So, so from my understanding, we're meeting the 23rd and the 30th. 30th right. And then, and the then 30th, April 13th. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. April 13th. Okay. Too. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Great. No, I think that makes sense. Thanks for making sure we got that nailed down. No, oh, all right. All right. Anything else? Any, anyone have anything? All right. Well, with that being the case, I would uh, like to propose. <laughs> I will make a motion to adjourn at 8.05 p.m. All right, who can we I get second. a second? All right, fantastic. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yep. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.